Hey guys, welcome to the lab. We are back with some more exclusive content. We're here to give you guys another episode of Sundays with the Clink Room. Stay joined by my good friend, Style. Style, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me on, Leon. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, a um, little bit of a filler week this week. Um, so, we got you to fill in. Um, we originally were supposed to meet uh, this weekend in St. Louis, but uh, scheduling conflicts happened, but we get to spend some time here. So, that's, that's good, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. All right, so um, Clink Room had an eventful week. Let's cover um, what we know happened. So the dead stock drop happened Tuesday uh, and then Monday for VIPs. So for those who don't know, um, all hats that uh, are up for pre-order, they get sent out to the pre-order. Um, they do order a, a limited number of extras, um, barring any uh, shipping malfunctions or damages or whatever, they do have a limited drop for um the hats a couple months after the uh pre-order ship out so let's cover kind of cover what dropped so uh we got the castronaut don't sleep and meat seeking um anything here stick out to you i uh i like that castronaut that's that's different it's mm -hmm. otherworldly uh, <laughs> i really like milos's work though he always does a great job and yeah that one's cool and then, and then don't don't sleep it don't sleep is really cool as well um you know you know i know that we get a lot of a lot of reapers but i do appreciate that this one's a little bit different and, you know it's good work me seeking is awesome as well um but i, I think castronaut and don't sleep are, are my two on this one yeah don't sleep is like a different take on a reaper it's almost like arizona fall league-esque or some type of minor league hockey like kind of vibes his uh his scythe actually looks like a moon, so that's kind of interesting. It's a different take on like the Reaper. It doesn't look like a traditional Reaper, so that's kind of cool. Um, meat seeking missile, like it's all fun in games until that's a real pit bull coming after your arm. But uh, like it's a cool concept for sure. And uh, that is, yeah, I'm with you. Castronauts real fun. Um, Milos is always doing uh, cool different um, things. His, his hats have a lot of personality. I feel like the characters like he has and, and what he kind of starting to move towards it's like there, there's a lot to him like mm -hmm. the more you look at him the longer you kind of think of you know what could it be or you know what what story is it telling but yeah, right he's, he's becoming a really good artist for sure yeah he was one of those that is kind of like a clink 2.5 artist yeah you know yeah. kind of came in a little bit later on and he's killed it yeah you always expect to see his work you know he's pretty much you know always around either has a pre-order or has something dropping like he's he's pretty damn active i would say yeah absolutely all right uh cut above when studio happy hour uh aurelian infinite fanatic and then triple threat uh any initial thoughts here uh, i mean i always love tj 40 swords work um mm -hmm. and i just thought this was like such a unique take on the cerebus you know yeah. did i say that right i hope so um, cerebus. <laughs> yeah the three-headed dog the guardian right to hell right pretty much right yep yeah so uh yeah man i i just like 40 swords he's he's one of those guys that you know if he's not on the mount rushmore clink he's he's pretty close just you know one of my absolute favorite favorite designers mm -hmm. so um happy hours cool that one's fun i mean everyone loves those uh you know midday half price drinks and then a cut above that's uh you know that one's cool as well the interesting part of like happy hour is like those kind of um generic um side patches that they came up with like this predates it a little bit but like that would have been perfect for those yeah. kind of uh, that that kind of coaster side patch that mm -hmm. they used um yeah i'm with you too 40s on my mount rushmore um in terms of artists uh longevity um you know creativity and just uh general awesomeness gets them there for sure he's he's got to be up there i think like him efra 
are, are mm-hmm. kind of two guys that really um, set the mark. Probably Jason V. Mm-hmm. My third. How, how many people are on round four or four, five? Four of them. Four. So only get one more spot. Huh. I'll leave that one blank for now. <laughs> but, uh, he's definitely um, kind of setting the bar, and uh, this one is cool. Like the the green is is kind of different from him. Um, but yeah, it's just advanced lighting on this one. It's red at the back, kind of lighter on the front, like just real, real cool, real mm-hmm. cool piece. And then cut above, like that. I think this was the second kind of barber themed wind piece. So um, yeah, he's kind of just expanding uh, his uh, his portfolio and doing stuff that you know kind of ex- expands the collection a little bit. So this is part of his like barber series. Yeah. Uh, kind of going through and telling that story and all that. Yeah. I think you need that after a while. Like if you're mm-hmm. just doing um hats to make hats, like I don't know, some people like collecting, like some serial clinkers like collecting stuff that like you know people do and you kind of see that with uh 40 with his sham series and then mm-hmm. he had the, the whole the series with the the Ronins and stuff like that. But yeah, so looks like you have wins you know, kind of tugging on the collector strings a little bit with this piece. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because when you get one, you got to get the second one too. So. Yeah, yeah. Or if you miss one, then you get you get a second chance. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot uh, of good reasons to, to to kind of play like that. So yeah. All right. Moving forward, we got Tropic Death, Rage Runner, and Dragon Roll. What are your thoughts here? Yeah. So yeah, you just mentioned him earlier, but I mean, Jason V's always been one of my favorite ones. I mean, he's kind of been been around since the start of Clink 2.0, and. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he he probably did some 1.0 stuff too, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's one of those guys that's just been doing it forever and is so talented and does awesome work. Um, I think Dragon Rolls awesome. Like Matthew Bell always does a great job with his work, and um, I don't know that that's just such a a unique take on a food hat, you know? Because mm-hmm. like usually food hats, you know, you just you know you see the food, but it's like you see the dragon first on this one and then you're like oh okay we're, we're talking sushi here yeah so, exactly um that's a unique take and then uh seamus has come on really strong too uh rage runner's cool uh i love you, you know like a lot of times you see like designers make hats and you're like why are there speed lines on it but, like this is one of those where like the speed lines make sense yeah yeah so. exactly exactly and it's like a realistic take on something that you normally see as a kid, right? Like a road runner. Like I don't think anyone really, um, for me, like I, I don't really like familiar with what a real like a uh, road runner looks like. So it's cool to kind of get a glimpse of that and be educated by something. Um, Tropic Death. I think that one skipped crits if I if I remember correctly. It just went right into like the pre order um, portion, and it right. kind of plays on that like catacombs um, kind of skull being made out of different things um that casey did a while back Mm -hmm. so like that one kind of adds to it it's like another kind of like skull made out of something this time Mm -hmm. i made out of flowers a little bit more softer than a skull made out of skulls you know right it also kind of reminds me uh do you remember the entire world like the crown that was made out of flowers yes tropic death Uh, i think it was called or something like that tropic king yeah yeah Yeah. kind of gives me the those vibes as well right and um yeah i think matthew bell killed the dragon roll like like mm-hmm. you said it's not your atypical food hat it's it's kind of like you know the dragon head kind of peeks out but it is still a food hat so like right you know, it's, it's it's a good pun it's an awesome design it's a cool way to think of it and yeah like i mean it doesn't look like a specific dragon roll but you can't deny <laughs> like the name it's like it's a dragon so it's like you can't be right. mad at it right so yeah yeah and, and i mean you definitely get like i feel like you see the dragon head first yeah and then you see the body after that and then like once you get a little closer you're like oh okay it's sushi it's a it's a dragon roll you know exactly so you get it exactly it definitely works so it's like the dragon emulating the sushi that's made to emulate the dragon <laughs> so, <laughs> right um still awesome like that just shows you like matt bell probably just doing some regular shit and just can't turn that that creative part of his brain off and just like, right. oh, you know, well, it'd be cool. If you, you know. And and I've just loved seeing his evolution too, because like when Clink 2.0 first started, he was just the hockey guy. Yeah, you know, I would call now, him the hockey guy. Yeah, yeah, and I mean now he can do 
everything. Yeah. So he's doing it's fantasy cool. stuff and yeah. different uh um food stuff and he, he's all over the place now. Yeah. So it's been so awesome it's to see cool. his evolution for sure. And he's open to collabs now too. It seems like he's doing more collabs and he uh he had the uh the horseman um mm -hmm. week kind of sorted out that was pretty cool to see so yeah, yeah. even rebranding himself he's now matt bells and whistles yeah yeah no oh, good on him all right we got the rippers up to snow good and drama queens uh any thoughts here yeah um i, th I think rippers is a really cool take on the kong trope i mean mm -hmm. It, it's hard to make creative Kongs at this point because there's been so many of them done with 2.0. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I really like this take on it. Yeah. They, the, um, there's this artist that does this really like intricate, like pulling style. His name is Paul Jackson. So this reminds me of that work. Okay. Um, but yeah, like the, Jake and Adam did a great job and like they got it um, so that it's not, kind of mishmash like it's still pretty clear what it is mm -hmm. um ideally i think i would have still wanted more like pull lines but i don't know how well that would have like been able to execute right because you still want to get that clear view of the of the of the Kong, skull Kong skull yeah 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 um up to snow good just reminds me of like like just haunted snowflake from like the white walkers game of thrones stuff you mm -hmm. know um and then drama queens is a real real cool uh, piece you know the queen of hearts heartbroken mm -hmm. heart happy like just that whole dynamic of like you know um happy and unhappy right you're playing on that that name and you know get the happy but all yeah that, so yeah exactly all right and then i think the last two yeah so we got jibe turkey and el cuco el coco by yeah. uh, brad racing um what are you thinking about these ones uh, Phil's my guy. I always love Phil's work. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've done so many collabs with Phil and um, I just, I love his style and, and the way that he, um, you know, brings his art to life. And and so I'm, I'm always a fan of Phil's work. He's one of my absolute favorite clinkers. And then uh, yeah, Brad Rayson, he always does a good job too. I, I feel like, like he's, he's a guy that's kind of been around since the start of clink 2.0, but like, I feel like he's always been very sporadic with his, uh, you, you know, he's not one of them that throws up, you know, five designs every week. It's like just every once in a blue moon, we get blessed with a Brad Racing design. Exactly. Exactly. Did you know, fun fact, that uh, every year um, about 150 people die from falling coconuts? Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Compare it, compare it to only 10 people a year from shark attacks. 150 people. So coconuts are way deadlier than uh, than sharks are. Yeah. I mean, if one fell on your head on the right <laughs> spot. Yeah. I don't know if, how many people die from trying to like climb the trees and falling off too. But like, yeah. That's true. But apparently 150 around, give or I take. I didn't realize coconuts were that heavy. Um... Depending, well, in in the wild because they got a bunch of stuff around it. Okay. Like what you what you see, um, by the time you get it here, that little nut part, mm -hmm. like it, there's a big husk to, around it and stuff. Okay. They, yeah. They gotta, you know. I uh, I, I live in the Midwest, so we don't see those things <laughs> around anywhere here. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, cool cool piece. The jive turkeys is just kind of almost giving you the fu. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Sure, there's a story behind that. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, but you know, it, it, you see a lot of Halloween hats and a lot of Christmas hats, but you, you don't get a whole lot of Thanksgiving hats. So, no, uh, it was cool to see his take on it for sure. I think part of why you don't is it's one of those, um, one of those holidays you just spend with family, like you're not really going out, right? Right, unless it's like Black Friday, maybe. Mm -hmm. But uh, blackout Wednesday. Yeah. So, so he's saying that it's a traditional Thanksgiving turkey sailing on the Mayflower. Okay. He thought it'd be a cool design to wear around the table. See. Yeah. Um, yep. Even if it gets relegated to the, the kids' table. But yeah, <laughs> it's a cool piece. 
um yeah like you said there's not many like thanksgiving hats even though it's like a huge holiday mm-hmm. i think most people uh attribute it to like a a family thing and sitting around and w- watching football all day but yeah. you know still a cool i mean piece. honestly it is the best holiday that there is out there i mean it's a holiday sitting around eating as much food as you possibly can and sitting around watching football and being thankful and not there's having that obligation of you know buy people presents and yes. stuff like you just just your presence is your present right yep. like just be around people that you love and eating good food absolutely yeah it's great it's a great holiday so for me i wanted to highlight one of the, the pickups from uh this drop so for me uh this drop i only have one um of of the hats that came out and it is jason v's um queen kind of queen design so it's pretty cool. Like it's got, you know, oh yeah, completely different upside down than uh-huh. it is right side up. It's got hints of metallic gold. I was gonna say, I just noticed the squatchy was that metallic gold. Yeah. And then the ender. Okay. So it's a cool piece. Uh tonal Kong, which is pretty rare, I would say. Mm-hmm. Usually the Kong and the new eras are not tonal. Right. But uh black front panel on a scarlet hat, metallic under it. To me, it doesn't feel like an atypical Jason V kind of hat, but mm-hmm. what the embroidery on it is like crazy. Yeah, that's a. It, I don't. I don't know if there's still sizes on the site, but that that in hand view should give people who passed on it a, you know, a reason to go back to the website and maybe pick that one up. Yeah. Well, and, and it's different from most clink hats too, because you don't see a whole lot of rail hats from clink. Never. You don't see a whole Almost lot never. of metallic yeah. you know buttons or uh uvs so exactly so if you guys um like hopefully it's still available in your size but the dead stock drop and a reminder that those ship uh, pretty much right away uh, two to three days uh from the ha- uh, hack club offices and ship to you directly so yep. that's the uh the dead stock drop nice. now we will cover the last call so these six uh designs that we will talk about um their pre-order ends uh, midnight Sunday. So before they get sent off to production, you have a last chance to pre-order these designs. You got Extinction Ender, North Star, Chamuka Kong, Chamu Kong, Chamu Kong. Um, those three. Um, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, three really, really talented artists right there. I mean, got uh, I, I always love CBS Inc.'s work. Um, mm-hmm. You know the originator of the chief which turned into the skull chief yep um legendary I mean, design yeah i, I wish we they bring start making those again but uh but no this one's really cool this north star um extinctioning uh is that josh balls uh yes okay. under josh balls yeah yeah he uh he always does good work and um yeah i mean you know Ephra and jacobo like you talk about like a crazy tag team right there like both of them super talented in their own rights coming together to to make a design it's really cool yeah it's 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 interesting to see you know both their styles in the, the like uh in the thing and you kind of wonder who drew what right but Ephra always is like on par the top of his game when, ter- when it comes to like these kind of mascot kind of logos mm-hmm. it's always really cool motion to it uh, always like has slick details um this one's kind of interesting in that like the like the red part itself has no outline mm-hmm. so i don't know if it's like purposeful or if it's gonna really be like uh kind of raised and puffed forward but it's it's a really cool kind of slick uh design and then kind of adding the uh pencils on the on the trident i think that's like you know oh yeah stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, it, it makes me curious how those kind of collabs work. You know, because I, when I collab with people, I can't, I can't draw to save my life. So yeah, I'm me literally either. just like the idea guy. And yeah, then, the concept artist. Yeah, and then they're the, you know, ones who execute it. So when you get two actual artists together, I'd love to see how that collaboration actually works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of curious who did what, mm-hmm. but it's an awesome like peace like yeah this is like this is kind of like kind of clink royalty getting together <laughs> right and, uh and uh making something but yeah definitely cool it's like a 
I think it's like a card game that uh, um, played in Mexico or brought from Europe, popularized in Mexico at the time of their independence. Soldiers okay. would play this game to entertain themselves in pastime. So it's a pretty cool, um, pretty cool thing. Yeah, that they're kind of telling that story. Uh, and yes, Chad, super skilled, super clean. <clears throat> I know some people kind of pointed like this almost feels like a noble north kind of design mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah, I could see that. Um, but I, I just think it's a smooth one. You could see like a minor league hockey team using this mm-hmm. with that kind of like navy and and uh like Panama tan color. It's just a really, really, really nice design. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. and then ex- Extinction Ender uh, by Josh. That's a smooth hat. I just for me, I kind of wish there was just one comet, but I mean I guess two's Two's fine too, but like just right. if you're gonna turn into like a baseball thing, I just wish it was just one. But I mean right. that's just nitpicking. It's still a pretty cool um design, I think. I'm interested to see like how some of the um what is that, like the hardened lava there that comes under his feet? Because it looks mm-hmm. like it's coming out from the volcano, or maybe that's just the land. Um, yeah, but how that'll land. work with embroidery with like the shadow of the foot there and all that. So it'll be cool to see how that one comes out. Yeah, I mean, whenever they do the the embroidery, it's almost like it's four D. Like, there's just different parts that some is like semi raised, some is like extra raised. <laughs> right. I imagine the head would be super raised, right? Yep. So, you know, we'll see what goes on there. But all right, moving forward, what do we got now? We got Texas Steer by Rafael, uh, Gator Grapple, and Old Fire. What are your thoughts here? I really like the um, the Texas Steer. I mean, that kind of evokes that like old Western kind of feeling. And Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that one's a lot of fun. Um, Could wear that to the rodeo and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's it's a cool one for sure. Um, Extinction Inc. That's um, uh, That's Donnie's wife. Don's wife. Yeah. Um, Is that the first one she got in or has she had it? I I feel like it is, but I could be wrong. I know she submitted some before, but I couldn't mm-hmm. remember if she got any in before that. But no, I uh, I like that one for sure. That that one's I like she. You can kind of tell that she's got that very like sort of like tattoo style, and um, I'm excited to see how that one comes up. And then Old Fire's cool too. Um, Sierra's hit like he's kind of got those two different styles. Like he's got the, the Mesoamerican style and then he's got like the cartoon style. And I really prefer, I, I really like his, his Meso style. I think he does a great job with that. Yeah. I I like Texas steer <clears throat> for half IL because like, this feels like a good kind of crossover hat for him. Mm-hmm. This almost feels like a, like a sports hat like it's done in the houston astros old brick red colorway you got the tan the Mm -hmm. metallic gold and the crimson um it's just a real smooth hat it's just like feels like something that like a minor league team could wear like just be like a even like the the rangers and astros have logos similar to this just without the the bull head Mm -hmm. um but yeah i just think it's a real smooth hat um and this could really appeal to people outside of clink in the sense that like it, it's just built like a what you're used to seeing mm-hmm. you know uh brick red black with a grander like just a smooth hat um and it's good to see extinction inc just kind of uh break through i know mm-hmm. she's a tattoo artist by trade so um it was really smart for her to use this like vegas gold tone because it's almost like a skin tone anyway yeah and then just her just use her art and just like have it stick out i know they would play with like different browns and teals and all that. And it, it would kind of take away from design. I think like them using uh, a Vegas gold canvas kind of allows you to see how you would see a tattoo almost. So yeah, a lot of the skin breaks and whatever are in that kind of uh, neutral tone of Vegas. And mm-hmm. you can kind of really see um, the art kind of play out there. So yeah, that's a good point. You know, you see a lot of like the finer details. I was curious to see how it get pulled off on them, like how they would clean it up potentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will be really interesting to see how it gets done in in uh, embroidery. Mm-hmm. Like, do you think they would make that Vegas fill in thread or negative space? Like, that's what I'm worried. That's what I'm wondering. I, I feel like he. 
I feel like he goes thread more often than he goes negative space. So yeah. I, I could see him, but, but then again, some of those black lines are, are, you know, kind of on the thinner side. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where it makes you wonder what, what will yeah. do with that. Cause that's what her profession is by trade. She's a fine line tattoo artist. Right. So a lot of the gaps are just negative space. Mm -hmm. So it'll be cool to see what they do with that. Yeah. If they make it filled or if they make it negative space. That'd be cool to see him do negative space with it. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with negative space, when you have so much of it in the middle, the mm -hmm. seam is going to seep through. Okay. That's yeah, what I you kind of worry about. I could see that. Yeah. You don't worry about that with like an A-frame or something like that, but mm -hmm. on a 5950, like that line is a huge line. So if you don't right. cover that line, mm -hmm. Like it will alter your your design, and and there is a lot of that right there in the middle. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they end up doing with it. But you know, yeah, Casey Casey, Casey always kills it with the embroidery. So I'm sure he'll make the that. I'm sure he'll make the right decision. I'm just as a fan, I'm just curious to see how he, they play it out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then Sierra, yeah, just so much personality. Like this is like almost right from a comic book, like Old Fire. I'm sure there's a cool story to it. It's representing a uh an interesting deity probably like yeah. I, I like that like it aesthetically it looks good and then it probably has a good story to it so right for that's sure something we can trust uh happen through uh sierra's work so mm -hmm. all right and then i think there was a double yeah double shock drop so uh classics are back so ray gun and rocket pops two of uh, uh full count studios i think like most popular designs are back uh, so one Dan and Joel, and then the rocket pops by uh, Joel and Dan again. So yeah, yeah, same same combo. So yeah, um, I um I like how they're doing the the classics side patch to uh you know because these were pretty early 2.0 designs. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's cool to bring them back and, and and honestly, rocket pops. I always thought the best version of it was the original one. The OG colorway. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, because I mean it's that's like like that hat is very much like a nostalgia hat like it takes you back to when you're a kid like eating the bomb pops you know and, and all that so like that traditional that regular colorway was I, I think the best one so i'm kind of glad that they brought this one back in a similar colorway where it's that classic you know rocket pop bomb pop like you know colors uh for people who missed on it the first time mm -hmm. and kind of getting this like uh clink cat clink classic badge or that side patch is kind of like a badge of honor now like i don't right. think they're just gonna um slap this on any type of hat i think these are just gonna be reserved for some of the best of the best we saw it happen with the top six sellers of mm -hmm. the year and now this is i think the first time we've seen it outside of that pack so yeah um it'd be cool to kind of see them use and uh and kudos to casey man like he was not a fan of the uh bringing stuff back i think he was like you know just let it sit in the past but i mean some things is like you know it's cool to get a refresher and right. you know it gives a chance for the collectors to buy another one or for people who genuinely missed it um to get a chance at uh, owning a piece um, i'm not sure if you're part of the uh facebook are you part of the buy sell trade group in facebook yes i am yeah all the time you see isos mm -hmm. and like people just you know I want a shot in the dark. Does anyone have this in a, you know, one half or right. know, three quarter or whatever? Like, you know, this, this stuff gives people a chance of people who uh, missed it, an opportunity mm -hmm. to buy. So, right. You know, well, I, thing. And I mean, think about how much clink has grown from when 2.0 first started to, to where it's at now. And yeah. like how many people, I mean, cause some of my favorite designs were from that first year, year and a half that 2.0 mm -hmm. came back. And, you know, think of all the people that, you know, didn't get to touch any of those designs because they didn't even know about Clink back then. Yeah. So, I think they had like 5,000 subs, yeah. um, 5,000 uh, followers when they first <laughs> came back. And the first offer, I believe it was like 12 hats. So unless you were like really crazy about it, you weren't buying all 12. Yeah. Like even Pierre bought like, I think eight of them, which <laughs> is still like an insane number, but he right. still didn't even get all of them. Yeah. So... There's going to be some that have really, really low um, accounts. So mm -hmm. it's cool to bring them back. So, 
I mean, hell, yeah. that, that first year that 2.0 came back, there were hats that didn't even make the pre-order threshold and never got made. Yeah, I don't know about half, but there there were some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah, just what a time. I, it, it feels like a lifetime ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, heck, I um, I found out about Clink from VFTV when you guys brought um, uh, I'm going blank on his name all of a sudden, Kurt uh, why uh, Weiss Miller on, yeah. and uh, like even for the first like couple months, I was like, is this stuff legit? You know, like <laughs> until I started seeing some of the pre-orders roll in, I was like, okay, okay yeah, this is yeah. like real. So definitely, I had gotten hip to them after they shut down and I remember being in a group chat and Ben from hack club, he was still manager at the time and he was doing like a clearance sale. Okay. So he just hit up like a bunch of team fitted people like, Hey, whoever wants hats hit me up. Yeah. So he put us in a group chat and I was like, I'll take whatever you have and eat. He's like, yeah, but just let me know which ones. I'm like all of them. <laughs> and I remember one of the members, Brett, uh, Brett Schwartz, shout out to Brett. But he had picked out a random clink room hat, um, and it was on sale at, at the hat club. It was like 10 bucks or whatever, but it was like a really cool, unique design. I didn't pick it up because I didn't know what the fuck it was, but it was a clink design. It was like a mosaic of NYC or something. It okay. looked like stained glass 1.0. It was just being sold at a random hat club. Right. And that's kind of what put me onto it. I'm like, like, who are these people? Like, what, <laughs> what is even a clink hat? Like, what does that even mean? Right. So then when I looked into it, I'm like, holy shit, these are the guys like they're mm -hmm. behind all these logos. And, right. You know, um, yeah. Well, and then, uh, yeah, I read about the story and then I was just always interested. Yeah. Well, like Paco's posted some stuff here recently where like some of those 1.0 hats at one point went on sale for like, you know, 50% off. off yeah. And yeah, like just crazy. Yeah. And now it's stuff like people wish that they could go back and get. You know, oh, like you see those... the, the stuff on eBay is it's not 50% off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 200% on. <laughs> yeah. Like like some of those uh cork bottoms, like yep. you don't ever see those. Yeah. I remember I got I, I acquired one through a private sale and I still like cherish that hat a lot. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Good stuff. But yeah, awesome. Um shock drop. Uh I like the weeks when there's more than one selfishly, but I mean, mm -hmm. these kind of fit. I mean, it's by the same two people, the mm -hmm. blues are slightly off, but you know, it's right. kind of the same theme. So, right. You know, it's always easier to buy two and kind of justify the free shipping. Right. Buy one hat, but yeah, good. Ooh. We got today. All right. So now we'll cover um, the fresh Friday uh, pre-order. So the last, um, these next six um, hats. So we got, uh, Mr. Dome pieces. I think this is his first clink, yeah, uh, design. So and, and Soundwave, uh, both of oh. them. Oh, okay, cool. Congratulations yeah. on both of them. The Ambassador and Soundwave's fitteds um, are bringing us Setsubon, mm -hmm. and uh, Rafael is bringing us Diamond King, Diamond yeah. Kong. What are your thoughts here? So, I, you know, first of all, just congratulations to to Mr. Dome pieces and Soundwave. I mean, that that first time you get one of those clink hats, and it's just coolest feeling you know and and you know mr dome pieces like he's just such like a, a positive influence on the community yeah, super like, nice guy. you know i've chopped it up with him a few times just awesome guy um so congratulations to them it's a really cool design you know unique and um i know just from following him on instagram that that's kind of you know like his style his interest you know that kind of like is that is that like a japanese kind of style i'm assuming mm -hmm. yeah it's um, got the japanese waves and the hot yeah air. yeah so and i know he's got a lot of interest in that kind of stuff so um shout out to those guys that's awesome uh diamond kong I'm, I'm excited to see how this comes out in embroidery because i think it could be really cool kind of kind of wonder if they'll use any metallics in it with it you know being a diamond so it'd be cool to see I know Clink doesn't go metallic very often, but it'd be cool to see that implemented into this design. So I just looked it up. Setsubon is the day before the beginning of spring in the old calendar of Japan. So it means seasonal division, referring to the day before the first day of spring in a traditional calendar. So learn something new every day, typically yeah. February 3rd. So you'll have the hat before February 3rd. So that's yeah. pretty cool. There we go. Um, 
So there is, it looks like a Japanese influence, like you mentioned. So like a Hanya mask, typically you see them in red. This one's in green. I'm not okay. sure if that was purposeful. Um, it's got the horns. Uh, typically like a Hanya is like the, like the representation of like a demonic figure sometimes. Okay. Um, female usually. I think Oni is for men, if I'm mis if I'm remembering my Japanese stuff correctly, but still a cool uh still a cool piece. It's got like the uh um the the waves done in the, almost like a new school type of way and then the the mask is almost like a yeah like a new new way of kind of depicting it. So it is interesting. Kind of Darth Maul at the top a little bit, but typically yeah. Hanya masks do have like devil horns and stuff. So Okay. Um it's a cool piece for sure. Uh, Diamond Kong, it's. I think they changed the colorway um, from the uh, Grits version. I do like the the added blues to it. It makes it feel more like a crystal. Mm -hmm. So it'll be cool how, like you said, it'll be cool to see how they uh, um, embroider this thing. I, I have a feeling it's going to have a lot of texture and a lot of roundness to it, and, mm -hmm. and I can't wait for uh, Casey to get his hands on this. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and then we got uh bassett so uh sierra's continuing his like egyptian theme and then incoming call by milos yeah that uh that basta that's I, I think that's my winner for this week um mm -hmm. really cool design like i love the egyptian style and and all that and like sierra is another guy too it's it's been cool to see his growth as an artist and hell yeah see the way that he's changed and evolved and um this this might be my favorite one that he's done since he started with Clink. Um, yeah, and then Milos yeah, he always does good work. Um, it's an interesting concept for sure. Um, yeah, he did a good job with that one as well. Sierra, like you mentioned, he's got the mezzo style, but he also does a hell of a lot of like Egyptian stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's real cool to kind of see him play in these two kind of worlds and these two like. Um, kind of realms and kind of you know explain these different things to you i don't know too much about bastard or whatever but i do see like a almost like two of those like an eye of horses on the the two cats in the background that's pretty mm -hmm. cool yeah and then uh and I, the, I know i know cats were huge with egyptian culture too yeah so yeah um you know i don't know too much in depth about it but i i, I do remember that part yeah. of it so. Yeah, you always see them like buried with like uh, royalty, and right. Uh, you got the Sphinx, like the monuments and all that stuff. Like, it's cool. It's a cool like hat, regardless mm -hmm. if you know the story or not. It's just like aesthetically looks good. So right, I think it, it it's cool. And then if you own it, then you might learn a little bit more about it. But right, I, I think it's just a really really slick hat. There's so much personality in that face too. Mm -hmm. It's like just looking back at you. Right. Incoming call is a fun one too, in the sense that like he just had one finish. I think it was called like Great Expanse or whatever. Okay, and it was like a kid on a car looking up at the stars. So oh, I just, okay. I just think of this as like the other version of it. Yeah, you know, this guy's like trying to like call home or whatever, and then right. You got the great expanse. I don't know if he meant to do that. I don't know. In my head, I think those two go together because it's kind of like him doing like these kind of scenescapes in a circle. Mm -hmm. Kind of feels like they're part of the same series. They might not be. I don't know. I'm sure he'll let us know in the comments. But right, uh, Milos back at it again. It's just like a really cool you know, <laughs> phone home. That technology is <laughs> not going to work the phone home, but you know, it's still like a cool like little design. Right. Yeah. For sure. All right, the last two. What do we got here? Zombie and Morning Pals. So we had a lot of um, hats kind of come through uh, from uh, last week's crits. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on these two? Yeah, like Zombie's cool just because it's got that, you know, Wu-Tang, like kill a, bee, yeah, kill a Bee. Yeah, but like a new twist on it where it's like the a zombified version of it. Um I, th I think they they did a really good job on that. Um, that one's a fun one for sure. I mean that that it legitimately looks like a zombified zombie bee there. Yeah. <laughs> so and then uh, morning pals. That's got like that what nineteen 
1940s, 1950s, like old school commercial vibe going on to it. Um, that one's really neat as well. I think they did some like cleaning up of the lines. It's real smooth now. I'm talking about Morning Pals, but um, right. I think one of the critiques I had from it on crits was there's like so little happening in the bowl. So they kind of fixed that problem by just making some waves to it. Mm -hmm. So it is cool kind of seeing um, what they did to kind of smooth out the design. But yeah, it's I'm with you. Like it's it's like one of those feel good early morning, Saturday morning cartoon type, you know, hats. And it just makes you feel good and nostalgic mm -hmm. about Saturday morning cartoons. I don't even know. Do they still air Saturday morning cartoons now? Is that a thing still? I don't I, I mean. I don't know about most people, but all I have is streaming services anymore. Yeah, so. yeah, same here. I don't know what live TV looks like Saturday morning. I'm usually right. not even awake Saturday morning, but um, <laughs> but yeah, this it's just bring it's just a whole vibe to it. Like it feels cool, like kind of Scooby Doo ish colors, you know. Mm -hmm. But like it just feels like something old and familiar, but like you know, cool. Like it's like a conversation starter. Right. You see someone stopping, like, hey, cool hat. Yeah, okay. and I'm with you though. Uh, zombie cool pun it, it evokes like that kind of kill a bee wu-tang thing mm -hmm. but like it's still different enough that he's he's got all these like weird arms and the honeycomb's cool and he's like a zombified bee like i just think it's a cool take on mm -hmm. something that's so familiar yet different you know right he's like a badass hornet wasp bee thing and he's chewing on shit and yeah like josh Foles. Always with the evil stuff, I feel like, like, right. but still, like it, it feels cartoony, but it's still mean. You know what I right. mean? Like he's got that kind of um, that style, kind of like locked down. Right. I think it's just like a real, real cool piece. And, and I'm over here, like, like I already don't mess with things that fly and can sting because, like, they've oh, got a tactical advantage on me. And now yeah. you've got like a freaking zombified version of it. Like, yeah, I'm not messing with that bee for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's just, man, I don't know. I've never been stung by bees, so I'm not going to hopefully oh, that, that, that streak continues. But yeah, I just imagine it. It's just sucking. Yeah, it does, for sure. It's uh, It happened to me when I was like five or six, and it's... Uh, it's probably changed your whole life. Yeah. Luckily, <laughs> I wasn't allergic, but yeah, it, it hurt. Yeah, that's got to suck. I mean, then them things have like... I mean, they die once they sting you, but mm -hmm. like they're little... Uh, once you like once they rip themselves out like it still pumps venom in you and stuff. Mm -hmm. Just, like, yeah i'm not i'm not interested in any of that right um but style my friend thank you so much for kind of filling in um these kind of like gap weeks you know casey's um taking some time off um in the summer which is awesome mm -hmm. but it leaves um me with uh trying to find alternative guests because usually the designers like being on for the the crits portion so right you know, we, we had to call a little audible and I appreciate you being flexible and uh, stepping in. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate you having me on. I always love chopping it up with you and, and hanging out for a little bit and talking clink. Yeah. Um, hopefully you'll have some more stuff uh, coming in. I mean, I've seen, uh, you know, your, your your stuff with Phil usually typically mm -hmm. uh, come through every every so often. Um, so hopefully uh, we get more of your work um, more often. Yeah. Um, Ink Park posted one that we did together a um, little bit ago. I'm hoping to see that one hit crits at, at some point. It was a fun design that we did together. But awesome. uh, yeah, for sure. Definitely more work coming in the future, though. All right, cool. Everyone give uh, Capsule Style, uh, Style with an I, a follow. Make sure you guys follow him and connect him with him on Instagram. Um, but yeah, until next time, Style and Neon, we got here. Peace. Peace. Brought to you by VFTV.